Welcome back, pet parent. You already know. If you've been here for even a hot minute, you know that your girl is totally woo-woo. And that's okay. I love it. And if that's not okay with you, that's fine too. So many of us, though, I feel like are starting to realize that there's something more. There's something more to life that we haven't tapped into. There's something we feel like is missing and we have been searching for it for so long. And for some of us, we have kind of awoken to the idea that there is energy. We are energy and energy is all around us. And I've talked about this before. I've had animal communicators on in the past. And I recently published an episode um, talking a little bit about Romeo and how I really used uh, that energy and that connection that I had with him, even though, no, I don't, I personally don't hear him speak to me in, you know, English. (laughs) Um, We still spoke to each other in other ways. And I just, I find it so fascinating. And I actually think that working, getting to work one-on-one with people, I see where There are so many things that we don't take into consideration oftentimes. And if you had asked me a month ago, I probably would have said water was like the number one thing people take for granted and don't ever think about. And today, my answer is totally different. It's energy. It's something that we just don't think about at all, but can make such a huge impact in the quality and care that you give to your pets, but really also to yourself as well. So I'm going to introduce today's guest, but really quickly before I do that, if this happens to be the first time you're listening to me and you're like, who is this crazy lady and what is she talking about? My name is Jessica. I am a certified canine nutritionist. I'm also raw certified in feline nutrition, a certified holistic pet health coach, and a positive reinforcement dog trainer. And on this podcast, we talk about literally everything to make your pets' lives better. And coming up, We are actually going to be incorporating some things to make your life better as well. And I think all of these things tie in really, really well together, which is also why I'm so excited to have Michelle Thomas on today's podcast. You may know her as Magical Mutts Michelle, especially if you follow me on Instagram. I have posted about her because she did a reading for me and my dog, Kimberly. And I normally do not read like guests bios because it's all posted on the website. You can go read about it. The guest is going to tell you all about themselves. But she has one line in her bio that I just couldn't not tell you. And it says, Michelle realized through her intuitive energy and animal communication work, I'm paraphrasing, that and and with her own life experiences, that true health cannot be achieved without addressing the deeper emotional and spiritual realm. And that hit me so hard when I read it that I was like, no, I have to say that. (laughs) I have to say that to you. So Michelle, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have this chat and that it's becoming like more mainstream to talk about energy and spiritual realm and incorporate it into our daily lives. Yeah. And one of the things that I find really interesting, and I I mean, you probably do as well. You were a licensed veterinary technician, so you have a background in science as as well as I do. My formal education is in science as well. So I have always kind of gravitated toward like our like Western understanding of science. Um, But I find that a lot of what we believe today what we talk about is being science what we talk about is like biology and the understanding of you know the solar system and all of the things around us um is really trying to explain spirituality and and the spiritual things that we really don't have an explanation for yeah i mean just the way that our bodies work our animals bodies work like there's so much magic in that like within science there's so much magic and awe of just how everything comes together to create our bodies and I feel like people can think that there's not a place for spirituality or energy work within the mainstream medical field but they really do uh, work together so beautifully 
Yeah, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, but I want to hear how you came to that, like how, so you do intuitive energy work and you're also an animal communicator. And how did all of that come about? How did you real, for like, were you little and you realize, or did it happen as an adult? Like, how did, how did all of this happen? I mean, I've always had a deep connection to animals. Like all of my childhood memories are spending time with my dog Sparky or out in the barn with my horses. And I just had such a deep connection to them. Uh, and since I was little, I always wanted to work in the veterinary field. I just knew I was going to work with animals. And I went to Michigan State and I got my bachelor's um, in veterinary technology. And even then, when I was in school at that time, I felt like there was something lacking, but I wasn't sure what. So I did some exploration into holistic medicine. I was able to mentor with a wonderful holistic vet. And that opened up a lot of doors to see that there's more to the care of our pets. And I went into focusing a lot on nutrition, which is very important. But I still saw that there was something lacking. And it was through my own uh, health journey that I really put together this puzzle of like, it can be combining Western medicine, nutrition, um, herbal medicine, but you also need to get to the deeper root, the energetic, emotional health, because our bodies are truly a reflection of that. And you could eat all the good food, take all the supplements. But if you have these energetic blocks or emotions that you're holding in and not addressing and holding space for, um, you really will see repeat patterns of illness. One of the things that I find so interesting because I've been on my own, not just physical health journey, but also mental health journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't say that lightly because I realize that there are people out there that deal with severe mental illness. And I'm I, so I'm not making light of that. Like I have no, nothing to complain about. But, you know, just being being a Libra and an overthinker and it's hard. <laughs> I mean, the human experience is wild and difficult yeah. and confusing. <laughs> yeah. For all of but us. One of the things that I have found, and I find it to be so interesting, is that I think women, especially, like, obviously, I, I wouldn't exclude men. We all have both masculine and feminine energy. <laughs> but I think just the female of the species <laughs> in general, we tend to be a little bit more open to and maybe even find connection with um, whatever you want to call it, the universe, spirit, source, energy, whatever it may be that you want to call it. I feel like we, we can, I don't maybe get there easier, maybe have more of an open mind to, to um, connect with it. And I think that is, absolutely something just like what you said i see that all the time in all of the um accounts i follow like on social media it's like do you can you can do all the things get up at the crack of dawn and go stand outside and um you know get get your son early in the morning have your coffee do your grounding do all of your all eat right um do your yoga do all of the things and if your mind isn't right it you know you're yeah. only going to get so far absolutely and that's so true for our animals also and what i've found through my work is like how deeply connected our animals and ourselves are so when i first started um doing the energetic sessions it was really focused on the animals alone but then it's really like beautifully shifted into where it's really healing um, in partnership with your animals because they're really here to be our guides and are here in our lives for a reason and our energetics are so deeply connected together that um, when connecting with your animal uh, also a lot can you know come up for you and your journey. So when you say you connect with an animal what does that mean what does that look like? Yeah, so 
sometimes difficult to put into words. So I'll try to um, best translate or give an idea of what I'm feeling. So it's important. It's like a ceremony. Even now I have a candle lit while we're speaking and I make sure to be very um, intentional with my energy where I'm grounding myself. Um, and I have a practice of say grounding to the earth, connecting to the heavens. That's like the way I, I start and light a candle and I set intention to connect with your animals, to bring um, any information forward to serve their highest good. And, um, I was kind of explaining to you earlier that I can connect, uh, on like three levels throughout sessions. And we may bounce between those levels and I, my job is to follow along. So sometimes your animal may be, may be giving me a message directly that they would like to convey. It might be something like, I really love these treats or, you know, I want this toy or funny, you know, things like this that they have requests, sometimes some wisdom beyond you know your wildest dreams of like this wisdom that these animals bring forward so i can connect direct messages to your animals i also can get messages from their body so that may look like uh, foods that can support them maybe things to support their microbiome detox that's needed so it's kind of like a body scan and receiving information of how to support their body that comes into play which we can talk about more later of like if um, it could um, working in conjunction with your veterinarian, I may receive some information that you can then follow up with them for further diagnostics or care. And then I'm also connecting with their spirit team, their spirit guides, and receiving information um, for holding space on a deeper level of maybe emotions that no longer serve them that I can hold space for releasing or deeper energetic shifts, or sometimes something regarding um, their people as well. So your spirit team can come in also. So when you have a, a session and you connect with an animal and possibly even the person, how, how do I want to ask this question? <laughs> when the, do you, because I know different people. I'm have, like, I think I know what you're like, how do I receive the messages? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny in the intro, you said, um, you've had an animal communicator connect you with your cat who's passed, but your cat doesn't speak to you in English. And I doubt that your cat is speaking to that communicator in English yeah. either. Or really, I, I think there's this idea that um, intuitives, uh, mediums are receiving like just hearing. Mm -hmm. I will even sometimes use that language of saying, oh, they said to me, but I'm not hearing something. And you're right that like every person may receive messages differently. And we all have ways that we are. So your cat may be communicating with you. You're just not aware. It's about tuning in to that. Um, and then my job is to translate that. And personally, myself, I um, can receive those messages in um, a variety of different ways. Sometimes I will see something. And when I say see something also, it's in your mind's eye. You see something. Or... I feel energy waves come in. So sometimes I don't know if you noticed in our session, my eyes will like flip back and forth and it's yeah. me receiving a downloaded channeled message. And then um, it's through practice that you trust this self. You trust, it's like a trust muscle. So I'll receive a message and then I say, hmm, I got this message. And, the, you know, through confirmation, it's like these messages, you learn to trust them. Um Sometimes I feel something in my body. So if uh, your animal has pain in an area of their body, I may feel that. So it's, you know, feeling these, um, interpreting different messages that come through. So that's, I think sometimes people, um, like even in general day to day, like following your intuition, your higher self, your guides, God, whatever you want to label it can be really subtle it doesn't have to be you know something um intense and it's about you know i may also not recognize these subtle things in my day-to-day -day life when i'm distracted but it is getting in this very grounded um different state that i can receive these messages clearly so so i i still want to talk about like all the food and stuff in just well, a little bit but before we get there, I want to ask about, like, the connection between 
a pet parent and a pet and inter- energetically, one of the things, and I don't know if I said this to you or not, but um, after, I don't know, have, I don't, having talked to and listened to and having so many different animal communicators tune in to various pets I've had, one of the things that I've I have heard a bunch of different pieces and kind of put a puzzle together for myself that I now have the belief that dogs are here to teach us unconditional love and cats are more like our spiritual guardian. I don't know if that is true, but that's how I feel in in my life, in my body. Does that make any sense to you? I just have to ask everybody that. Yeah, you know, I see a lot of variety of lessons with dogs. Like, um, I think just like people, someone just actually asked me this today because I was talking, I made some posts on Instagram about some really highly spiritually evolved dogs that I've been connecting with. But not all dogs are very spiritually evolved. Um, and some are, and it can really matter where they're at on their soul journey, how many incarnations they've had, where they've been, what lessons they've learned, what they bring to us. Uh, but yes, certainly this unconditional love is really important of, and part of that can be like meeting them where they're at in their soul journey. You can learn a lot of lessons through difficult relationships, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but cats certainly are like energetic protectors I think even in your session some cats came in to do some energetic clearing so I'll bring in spirit guides to help me during sessions and sometimes cats will come in to do energetic uh cleansing I always have like little totems um altars that I set and ask who wants to come in before each session even now I ask I don't know why but this snake picture wanted to come in while we talked and a dragon which is like my son's dragon toy that likes to come in but yeah I have a lot of little cat statues and I'll often bring them into sessions uh, because they're very efficient energetic cleansers so I I forget how you worded it of their purpose of like a protector like yeah they're I think they're like spiritual guardians Mm -hmm. um and it is funny I after I had that session with you I was like scrolling and I saw this beautiful purple dragon brooch and i was like i need to buy that and the, like how i say like uh you may not hear something mm-hmm. these little signs when you something comes up and you keep seeing it it's like yeah yeah, yeah it's funny your so, drag energy calling to you right um so how do you i mean every relationship is different Listen. Obviously. Do you find that you're often kind of bridging the gap energetically between pets and their pet parents? Like, in my mind, I'm, you know, an average pet parent is like, okay, I know I need to feed this better food. I know that my dog is needing to go for a walk every day. I know that when they jump up and they stare at me, like, it means X, Y, Z, you know, different animals have mm-hmm. different ways of expressing themselves. But that, like, energe- is do you find that most people just don't have that energetic connection with their pets? How do, are you just, like, bridging the okay. gap? Yeah, it time? depends on the person, how in tune that they are. But I feel like, um, like, feedback I get after the sessions is that people have, like, a deeper understanding and connection with their animals. And I think bridging that gap can be um, how I talked about, like, sometimes it's a message directly from your animal of, um, what they need from you for them and also what they want for you. And then also a deeper understanding of maybe there was a uh, trauma that happened to them before you had them or something that can give you a deeper understanding of why they have this behavior or this fear now. Um, and then I do, so I'm doing uh, with this communication, but then also will sp- hold space for helping to release this so you can see shift um, shifts in behavior by holding space for releasing these emotions, these traumas that happen. And this can be in this lifetime or other lifetimes. That's what I was getting ready to say. Just to put it, yeah, I'm like, I don't know how. 
which yeah. often we have multiple lifetimes with our animals, you know, it can be really beautiful. You know, there's some souls that you are deeply connected to. And I love when they like assure you that you'll always be together through many lifetimes, you know, that's like, so beautiful and sometimes uh last week i had a lot of dogs that were childhood dogs that have come back um to these people as adults you know and it's a and within that doing a lot of like inner child healing work for that person to really you know heal that part of themselves that that dog was there with them to experience in that time that is so interesting to me too the idea of like inner child work um Mm -hmm. it's it's a tough one to for me (laughs) probably for everybody to uh face Mm -hmm. and the idea that like our pets could be here to help us with that but also we could they could be coming to us because they need help right is that yeah absolutely i think it can go both ways um of yeah, healing and partnership, healing each other and learning lessons together. You know, something I see also is like, you can, I had this dog this week that has been with his owner over a hundred times and always as the relationship of dog and human. And he said he looked for at shelters for over three months and was like, this is, you know, couldn't find his dog. He like reached his hand in the cage. The dog licked his hand. And like, before he even like looked at the dog, he just like knew like, this is my dog. And there can be like, you know, profound, deep relationships like that. But then also sometimes you get an animal that you don't feel deeply connected to. And I work with a lot of people who have a lot of grief or guilt around that. But there's also a lesson within that as well, you know, Um, that every animal isn't going to be your deep soul connected animal. And that's okay, too. And you're also still there to teach each other things and and releasing this guilt that you don't feel like you know I say guttural feeling of like connection to this animal you know you're not going to feel that with every animal and yeah well speaking of guilt um that was one of the things that I've actually been working on myself since our session because I went in thinking that my dog Kimberly was going to have all of this trauma and all of this like help that she needed and like she really ended up like she had some Mm -hmm. but she really like what what I was left with more than anything was she was like I got my bed I got my water bowl I'm good (laughs) yeah exactly yeah (laughs) and so like I've been trying to let go of the guilt I had been feeling for so many years with like, I'm not doing everything I need to be doing. I'm not supporting her in the ways I need to be supporting her. And maybe, you know, obviously there's always still room and work that needs to be done, but like trying to r- release my own guilt because she was just like, I'm good. Yeah. People would be like, tell me what else do they want? And they're like, I don't know. Like you could give me a piece of bread. Like I'm fine. Like, which is usually not, you know, like, um, usually they often have a lot of, uh, things they want you to do even outside of activities with them. They're like, uh, you know, go running, go dance, listen to music, find joy within yourself. Even with traveling, people will be like, I'm so guilty that I'm going on this vacation and leaving my pet. And your animal's like, oh, I'll miss you. But like, oh, that's bringing you joy. That's wonderful. Like, Usually it'll be like, show people pictures of me, talk about me, think about me, maybe bring me something back. Like, um, and they just want to know like the plan or who they're staying with, you know, but yeah, of course there's some animals who have deep rooted separation anxiety, but honestly, most of those animals aren't worried about themselves. They're worried about their person and an instability in the person. So it's like often working through them feeling that their person's safe you know without them so you said that like initially you were just like trying to exclusively work with the animals but it sounds like the animals have kind of almost made you like yeah the animals demand us to take care of ourselves 
which is like you'll take care of your animal before yourself. So it's been a beautiful way to like open up uh, for people to like there's such in our society of feeling like you're selfish or guilt you feel guilty for doing things for yourself but you will endlessly do things for your animal and i'm like doing things for yourself is doing something for your animals like self-care is taking care of your pets because if you're in balance that throws them off you know that that's a clip i'm just gonna have to post that as a clip because um i certainly am guilty of that of like completely ignoring my own wants and needs and putting everyone else uh, above above me and um trying very hard not to do that anymore yeah (laughs) our animals don't want that for us they want us to be happy and take care of ourselves on a emotional mental physical level they want us to find joy yeah, so often they'll just request things that bring you joy and they want that feeling in the home. They're like, can you play this music you used to? Can you do these things? Because, you know, stress comes up in life and we forget to do those like simple, joyful things. How often do you think our pets want to be included in our spiritual practices if we have any or ask that we start spiritual practices? Like, whether yeah. that's like journaling or meditating yeah. or whatever that is. I, I feel uh, that most animals really do. It's really important. And it's interesting. I just yesterday had a session. I asked him, um, this person, like, do you have a spiritual practice? Because your dog is telling me that, you know, you do and you should really focus on that. And he's like, I don't. But then it came through that his spiritual practice is gardening and connecting with the flowers. So we can be. Um, spiritual practice doesn't need to look like, um, you know, maybe we were raised for it to look like, I mean, I think it's beautiful if you have a religion that really, um, you know, resonates with you, but your spiritual practice can be something simple like gardening or yoga or whatever calls to you hiking, you know, um, have this dog last week also who is preparing to leave his body. And her other dog, he used to always go hiking in the mountains um, with his person, and he's no longer able to do that. And the other dog doesn't always want to go hiking, she told me, because once she hurt her foot, well, that's it. and she was a little, like, felt vulnerable that she could hurt her foot again. And he's like, before I go, it's really important that you embrace hiking with her because there's magic in the mountains and, like, this is an important spiritual practice for his owner to be hiking with her dogs. And so he like, he can't leave her until she can like have that spiritual practice again. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, <clears throat> excuse me. That's actually really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, and also made me think of something I, I didn't think of before. Um, and I don't know why, but the idea that, we well, we have, I think, so much grief, sadness around the idea of losing our pets, and that's not wrong, but yeah. also it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And I've had so many animal communicators tell me that it's like, yes, to us, it's death, but to them, it's just moving on. Yeah, it's just another transition out of their body. Very rarely have I seen, maybe if it was something very sudden or tragic, you know, but generally animals really are, yeah, it's not a scary process for them. And they, our animals can have such deep connection with us and with the other animals, um, even beyond their body. So it can be really a beautiful process. I know a lot of people grapple with guilt. Uh, when an animal passes, maybe I could have done this, maybe I could have done that, maybe. But um, there's something beautiful in like honoring the way that your animal wants to die. But sometimes that means not doing a lot of interventions. This dog I was just speaking of that wants this other dog to go hiking in the mountains, he was like ready to leave his body and told us this. But once uh, we actually had her stop a lot of interventions, he's 
I mean, he was a completely different dog. He's rebounded. He wants to stay in his body longer. He was stressed out by going to too many appointments, too much poking, too much prodding, even like, you know, he uh, just wants the simple things. He wants his owner to cook some meals for him. He wants to like greet people around the neighborhood. He wants to play little nose work games. And these things are what bring him joy. He doesn't want to have a ton of intervention. And she honored that. And he like has made a rebound, like blossomed. It's so interesting that that came up because it also came up in the recording I just did right before yours. Oh, really? Um, and it's been really like heavy on my heart since Romeo passed, which was at the beginning of August. I keep telling myself I'm going to do a reel and I haven't done it because it's hard, but it just keeps coming up that like, I, I feel like I want to give people permission almost to not have to intervene in every single thing. Yeah, and absolutely. To like, and it, and like, who am I to give people permission? But I, I, I feel like people have such a hard well, I think time people with worry it. about judgment. So by people validating and saying, I know you're making a decision out of love and from your heart and what your animal you feel is best and your animal is asking you to do. And yeah, I'm not judging you for that. You know, I think that's in our, especially with social media. And everything, you know, people are worried about judgment from others on the way they care for their pets. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, animals, um, a big thing that a theme that comes up for me is animals do not want you pitying them. That is, I mean, no one wants pity directed at them. So um, like when they're old or they're going through something, just making like an offering of love of however that looks, but not. Yeah, not pitying or over worrying or tr trusting them. My mom's cat was just sick and I uh, just had a little upset stomach and I connected in with him and he said he ate a snake outside and was had a little upset belly, oh my which gosh. he's been obsessed with hunting snakes all summer. And I did a little energy work on him and he's like, I'll feel better in two days. And my mom was hovering over him and worrying about him and messaging me. And then he wanted to go outside, which he's allowed to do sometimes, but he always comes back quickly. He didn't come back. And she's so worried and she's frantic running around. And I connect in with him. He's like, I'm under the porch. She's annoying me. I <laughs> told her I'd be better in two days. Like, she needs to, like, give me some space. <laughs> and he said, when she goes up to bed and proves to me that she's, like, giving me space and not worrying, I'll come in. Of course, it was like 3 a.m. But he's like, I'll come in now. But I told her, like, he was, like, annoyed by, like, the coddling. He's like, I'm a cat. I know what I'm doing. I told you two days. Like, and he's fine. He's fine now. Which yeah. is, like, to say, like, you know, I was like, okay, if he's not better in these two days, maybe take him to the vet. It's not like a substitute. But, you know, some trust in their bodies and what they're doing. Yeah, that's funny. You're annoying me. I can definitely see like literally every cat being like you're annoying me yeah. um so connecting in getting a lot of the like spiritual stuff that is really really cool and can be very beneficial but one of the one of the things that you do that i find absolutely fascinating is um how you can kind of connect with different food or, or not not that you're connecting with the food you're connecting with the animal but they're they're telling you about telling you telling you about different foods that might work better for them or foods that mm -hmm. maybe don't make them feel that great can you tell me a little bit more about that maybe give me some examples of how yeah. this works and that's actually like how i started doing the energetic work when i first started um i was just started playing around with it uh, for doing diet recommendations. I used, actually used to own a store um, here in Vermont that focused it on like focused on fresh feeding and supplements and things. So I started um, utilizing it with my customers. Where you know at first it's like you know when you first come coming out with the stuff, it's like a little hard. You're like, do you mind if I just try something a little? You know, <laughs> maybe seems weird, but. <laughs> 
and it was working. It's like I just asked the body to tell me what's in alignment and what is not energetically in alignment. And so basically I'll uh, write a chart of like these are the proteins in alignment for their body. These are the proteins not in alignment for their body. If I get a no, I will actually ask like why uh, maybe like intolerance or um, some foods are like high in heavy metals. So I can ask more questions. But then I can kind of have an idea of what bodies are most in alignment in that moment to support your uh, animal's body. Um, and yeah, I just started seeing where, you know, customers have been struggling with their animals having like GI tract issues or skin issues and getting results of like improvement. So that was like, yeah, gaining the trust and now um, utilize it often to just see. Uh, it's like taking out the guessing game around what foods will work. And then I can ask questions also of like, okay, like fat, like how much fat do they need in their diet? What percentage of veggies should it be cooked or raw and that can shift so i just want to give that disclaimer i guess with everything energetically this is like a snapshot of what in the moment so in six eight weeks you know maybe their body needs a little something different but i know people spend a lot of frustration trying different things seeing what works trial and error and it's really been cool to like have like this snapshot to make recommendations yeah that does sound really really awesome um and you had told me that turkey doesn't do well for kimberly and i didn't it was like as soon as you said that i was like oh my gosh she was having a few months back um some kind of like food aversion issues and it was very frustrating trying to figure out what was going on. And it happened that I was feeding her turkey at that time. And um, it took it took weeks, honestly, for me to kind of get, or for her to get back into like, just, okay, I'm eating. Like it was always, a, it was like this struggle for a while. Yeah. Yeah, her um, body even, didn't feel good. So she. Yeah. And um, fortunately, I I already didn't have any more turkey in the house, but just knowing that, like, it was almost like I felt like, oh, I should have realized, but I I didn't at all. But then as soon as you said it, I was like, it was like it popped in my head, like, it was turkey that was, because I remember I had a couple pounds of it, and I was like, well, you know, we'll cook it, and we'll, mm -hmm. you know, which, you know, gently cooking it on the stove, and it got her, like, she would eat it, but she was like, not excited about it and she was really kind of standoffish and yeah it took it took us a while and so now I'm like all right we're good that w it was also very confirming yeah to you know like those little things that mm -hmm. come up I'm sure in sessions all the time where people yeah. are like aha moments <laughs> yeah yeah I yeah. work with a lot of picky eaters also just to get kind of to the root of what's going on. And sometimes it's emotional and sometimes just within their body, their digestion needs some support or detox or something um, that they're feeling nauseous or something deeper or that certain foods are causing their body not to feel good when they eat. Or sometimes it's just preference. So sometimes they're telling me foods that they want and then I'm like, your body doesn't really like that. But just like us, you know, sometimes we love the taste of some things that are <laughs> yeah. in our highest alignment yeah I know I had a I have a client who gives his dog so much cheese and he's like I need him to lose weight and I'm like we have got to cut the cheese but <laughs> cheese is a huge <laughs> request for dogs yeah, yeah he's like but get my dog loves it so much and it's sometimes it's all he wants to eat and I'm like okay well yep. you know just not obviously not doing what you do but like just walking him through the like, okay, we're going to reserve cheese for like special occasions and sure, let's make yeah. it raw and let's make it, you know, like, let's try to make this as healthy as possible um, because his dog definitely needs to lose more weight than I would like. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, it's funny how, you know, obviously they have preferences just like we do. 
Um, though if they had never gotten it in the first place, they wouldn't know to crave it. Yeah. Oh, this dog, it was, uh, I, I think I had mentioned to you that like food came up a lot yesterday mm-hmm. in my sessions yeah. where this dog said, um, I really love when you give me bread. He wanted me to tell his person that. And she understood. oh, that's interesting because like, if I try to give him a piece of my bagel or something, he's not that into it, but we have a friend who makes this bread out of a sourdough starter. And like this starter is like really meaningful to her. Um, there's something behind it that like she's had it for a long time and it means a lot to her and she bakes these loaves of bread and shares it with her friends and the dog was like yes that bread is infused with love like it tastes so good because I can like feel the love in that bread like the energy of it that's amazing so what are and obviously you don't have to like give me anything that would be like a tell or make anybody feel weird or embarrassed but like what are some of the stranger requests that you you've gotten from animals oh someone whose um boyfriend doesn't live with them so he'll like come and stay sometimes and leave the dog was like can he leave his dirty underwear here on the bed when he leaves (laughs) and i'm like i'm just the messenger is what your dog's (laughs) asking like so sometimes dogs will you know request funny things or oh, I, I had posted or someone had posted something about this I had this dog yesterday who kept going on about the grandma's hair she was like she's not the nicest hair um and then she tells her mom well you have nice hair too but like not as nice as grandma's like <laughs> just like, <I'm> like okay <laughs> those you know backhanded compliments yeah I guess. backhanded <laughs> she's like it's nice but yeah or yeah so I love when they have their like personality come through or like really confident dogs. I had, um, and I always ask permission before sharing anything, just to put that up there that if something comes up in session, you know, I'd like to, uh, that's fun to share. I ask permission of the person and the dog and a lot of dogs like want to share this stuff. Like I'm sure Kimberly would want everyone to know that she's princess sparkles. Like, <laughs> gonna be proud of that like you know um yeah and I I had a dog that wanted to do yoga with her mom and she wanted like she said a purple mat next to her which she's like oh I do have an extra mat that's purple you know and then she said she wanted to like have her picture taken and share it with everyone so some dogs like really want to be like out there and showing off you know their stuff so I also saw um a cat that wanted to go to ride in the basket oh, of the yeah. bicycle. I like love this cat, which this is like stuff that I'm like, so that when I'm saying it, you know, I have to have a trust muscle because I'm like, first of all, your cat is telling me that he wants to wear a hat. And like, logically, I'm like, why would your cat want to wear a hat? Like what cat wants to wear a hat? But this is what he's showing me. Like I was seeing a hat on him. And she owns a store. I think he would want everyone to know. So Lone Star um, Pet in Arizona. And he actually like in the first session I ever did with him, he's like, I want to go to the store more. And same thing. I'm like, my cats would never want to come and hang out at a store where there's people and dogs coming in and out. No, this dog, this cat like wants to be there. So he hangs out at her store. And I guess she has a display with some hats on it, like for dogs. And he's seen that. So. She's like, yeah, he's seen a dog hat. And I'm like, well, he wants his own hat. So he's been wearing hats and he absolutely loves them. And he's like feeling himself. And then he also told me, like, I want to ride a bike. And I'm like, telling me he wants to ride a bike. Like, this seems makes, she got him a basket and he's loving the bike. He's wearing his hat in his bike basket. And Last time I talked to him, because we chat frequently, he's like, tell my mom to go faster on the bike. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, some animals are just like, yeah, crack me up. And... Yeah, it's like, he sounds like he would make a very good adventure cat. <laughs> well, that's how he words it. See, he's like, I want to go on adventures because the first time I ever or maybe one of our first sessions he had uh they live in like the desert in arizona he had gotten out of their yard and came back with cactus in him and stuff and he so she's like you have to tell him 
to stay in the yard. That's dangerous. And he's like, well, then you need to take me on more adventures. Like, I'm going to find my own adventure if you don't take me on these adventures. Wow. So, yeah. It is interesting, especially for a cat. But I, I mean, you know, to yeah. each their own. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone who knew about this cat, you know, I connected with her cat. And she's like, ask him if he wants to wear a hat. And he's like, what? No. And then, so, you know, like he wants to stay in the yard. He's like a little jealous. They go on walks around the neighborhood without him. But if they ask, do you want to come? And he's like, no, I want to stay in the yard. But can you talk about me while you are on your walks? And then um, she sent me a message uh, last week saying they took a walk from the neighborhood and they made sure to like chat about him during it. And when they came back, he was like waiting at the fence, which is unusual for him that they, he was like, seem very pleased that they have been chatting about him. That's adorable. Yeah. So um, when you're doing these sessions, do you, do you feel like, this is going to be a weird question, do you feel like people or pets get the most out of them? Oh, I feel like initially the pets, but the deeper or longer, like the more sessions I do with people, then... Uh, the more they open up and see the shifts within themselves also. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like on the on the surface at first, they might recognize it within their pet. And then as we go deeper with more sessions, they really start to see shifts within themselves also. Yeah, and I, I just can't help but wonder if like that's their pet's intention all along. Yes, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, they really care about us and want us to yeah, be happy and healthy. Yeah, yeah. I think, and this is just my brain rambling, but like, I, I, I often feel like as humans, we we are so egotistical as a species. Like, everything is about us all the time, mm -hmm. and we, so many of us, I think, overlook the fact that. All of the animals. I also feel like the plants and you know, I was know, just going to say that, river, like everything. Like, yes. Yeah, I truly believe there's spirit within everything around us. I use flower essences all the time and they're deeply powerful. So, yeah. Yeah. I felt like I don't do a lot of gardening, but when you were talking about that um, person needing to get into the you know, into the gardening, like that was his spiritual practice. Like that hit me when you said that. I do have plants that I care for, but um, I don't consider myself a gardener, but it is definitely something that like I talk to my plants mm -hmm. and I haven't seen Gloria in like four days and I'm outside every night. Like, where are you? <laughs> oh, I love Gloria. My, my frog friend um, who likes to burrow herself in the soil around my palm tree and I think for me once I shifted my perspective to that like life got so much more beautiful and enjoyable that like I try to be mindful of everything around me and give thanks and acknowledge it mm -hmm. you know when a little bug is on you you like oh instead of you know you're like say hello to it <laughs> yeah well, I try to do that I I um, will not kill a spider. And I think spiders are like the best house guests because they just clean up everything, clean up all the ants mm -hmm. and the bugs and the, mm -hmm. they're amazing little things. Tick, ticks are the only thing. I just oh, I was like rushing a tick the other day and I'm like, I'm sorry, but you're the only little. I know. But you can give a little blessing, you know, it's yes. like that was the <laughs> other tip uh, that a dog gave yesterday about food. Um, they're talking about eating high residence food, food that's um, grown with love, vegetables and things that are. But then they said, um, but also you should say a blessing over your food. It, it's good for your physical health. I'm going to try to word it like the dog did. It's good for your physical health to say more prayers over your food. Oh, that's so sweet. But, like it, it uh, raises the vibration and sends blessings to your food, which will in turn nourish your body in a deeper level. That's so sweet. I love that. I love yeah. that idea. Um, I'll have to do that too. Yeah, I learned so much. Exactly. So today when I ate, I make sure like, thank you. You know, 
yeah a reminder sure. because yeah i'm yeah not in that practice or we associate that practice maybe with a religion from childhood mm-hmm. that we're no longer practice but we can yeah. do all these things however it feels right for us so many people could benefit from this like even even skeptics can benefit from it i think because even if in the moment they're mm-hmm. like yeah like they might start seeing mm-hmm. patterns or like something that you or you know whoever they choose to work with um said to them they could start seeing that like wait a minute mm-hmm. so and so said yeah this and now my dog or you know or my cat is doing you know whatever mm-hmm. like I, I think that any, any and everybody can benefit from this kind of work yeah and i've let go of like my job like uh or my intention is not to just like convince anyone that they should work with me i feel like if i feel in resonance um then you'll reach out and you know like spreading the word about i do explaining what i do but i'm not trying to like sell anyone anything because Mm -hmm. it has to be in the time that's right for them and i've also let go of like not be it it is not uh it does not hurt me or offend me if you are skeptical of what i do like that's your own journey and it's not anything personal against me um how we talk like you know i would say like 95 percent of my clients are female and um yeah there is like if they're males come in it's usually like as a partner and sometimes people say or it'll come up in session so their guides will tell me uh he's skeptical of you he's like around the room like, he's skeptical of you and i'm like that's okay <laughs> like it's fine i'm just here to uh offer what comes through and then people can do what they want with it or what feels in resonance with it mm-hmm. i think it's beautiful and i i have worked with a handful of animal communicators um and i will say like at the beginning I didn't know the things to ask, like to feel more comfortable, I guess. I had um, a couple of, I don't want to say they were bad experiences, but I definitely had people who didn't do what you do as far as like asking permission, Mm -hmm. um, which I saw caused negative effects in in my animals. They didn't like that. Mm -hmm. They didn't want somebody coming in and just like barging in without No, you need to ask permission then introduce yourself and let them know what's going on and the animals are guiding the sessions for me i'm never forcing anything and every step i'm asking animal permission and also asking if it's in the highest good for them because sometimes things are just too intense i mean we can't go into therapy and layer everything in one session like same for them like some stuff is maybe you don't want to go back to a traumatic event and go through that energy you know like so yeah yeah, everything needs to be done with respect yeah no it's hard for sure to do that um to go back and revisit it's like that that you haven't worked through at all it's just like (laughs) um so i imagine it is it is just as difficult for them Mm -hmm. but if people do feel called to learn more about your services or even just go ahead and book with you where can they find you Uh, well i'm on instagram magical mutts michelle and then i have a website that you can do online booking it's just uh, magical.mutts.com and you can reach out by um on my website or dm me on instagram if you have any questions at all so i'm happy to share that's awesome I, it's also in the show notes um, for anybody who, if you happen to be driving and you're not like writing stuff down, you can always go to the petparentingreset.com and pull up the show and pull up the show notes and you'll see all of the information for Michelle there. And um, I just want to thank you again because I I personally feel like there are a handful of things that I'm like, yes, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that. And there are a couple of things that I'm like, I definitely don't want to do Mm -hmm. one of those things is like grief counseling and and i feel like that um even even with connecting more in with myself i couldn't i don't know that i could do what you do (laughs) as far as like Mm -hmm. 
the number of animals and people that you work with and try like there's just so much room in there for I don't know I just I don't think yeah it was like some like I deeply care about mm -hmm. everyone but I also like I think it comes down to risk that I just make an offering and then I have to release that they do with that I can't hold on to controlling anything mm -hmm. of what outcome you know um, yeah I I get that I'm yeah. definitely not there so I very very much respect and appreciate what you do um and I'm looking forward to the next time we meet for yeah. for Kimberly which um will probably be in a couple of months I feel so. like like the more that I connect with an animal too it's just like they open up more and like the mm -hmm. their personality just comes through yeah and they'll you know be like oh I remember you I like you you know mm -hmm. for, for my sure. amigo that's fun to hear where I'm like oh <laughs> yeah well I mean you're not gonna like meet somebody for the first time and like share your whole life story that's not gonna yeah. happen yeah I mean some some animals are chatty right away but some you know just like people uh, there's a doggy daycare where um, I've been seeing like a lot of dogs at the daycare. So it's really fun because they'll like talk about each other and are like, you know, oh, I already know you. So and so told me about you. I'm like, oh, okay. So, like getting to know all the, That's, the daycare that is so dogs. Cool. That is so cool. I love that so much. And I do, I mean, after having um, had the session with you, I am like fully in support of and I, I think I told you like I don't like having people on that I haven't used their product or service mm -hmm. um and so I want to be able to say like yes I can I can honestly say that like this was beneficial that I, I didn't find any like there wasn't anything negative like I was telling you like mm -hmm. the first couple of animal communicators I worked with years ago I there was definitely like blowback with my animals and like your animals started having behavioral like showing you that they weren't happy really really interesting my cat Romeo who just passed um I had three different people well two animal communicators and one muscle tester uh -huh. connect with him and did not like go through the process that you and also Karen Dindy Smith did uh -huh. so he was good with her and then Kim was good with you where like asking permission and you know all of that like ritual thing that you do when you start and he would literally um walk around the entire room and spray everywhere oh. while in session and in fact the muscle tester i um i knew exactly when she was tapping into him because she did it remotely i wasn't like on the phone or anything with her she just did it on her own I knew exactly when it was happening because he walked around the whole room spraying. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cats like to give strong messages with urine, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. I was like, I texted her, um, or I got the email from her the next morning that like she had done blah, 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 whatever. And I was like, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love cats yeah. so much, but that is unfortunate that that's the way they uh, show their displeasure often it's a, mm -hmm. and that is actually the ultimate thing when someone's like my cat stopped peeing on something after our session I'm like oh that's like the right. holy grail of like <laughs> accomplishments yes. um yes believe me I feel that on <laughs> such a deep level um, all right, guys, please check out right. Magical Mutts Michelle on Instagram, magical.mutts.com online. And again, highly recommend her. And I really look forward to hearing from you um, what happens if you do book a session. Uh, you obviously do not have to let me know, but I would love to hear about it. <laughs> thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah, do you have any you like hurting words for anybody who like? I don't know. And people and, often ask, like, what do I need to do to prepare for a session? And I say, just come in with an open mind and open heart. And that's it. That's it. I love it. An open mind okay. and an open heart. And with that, um, you guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this week. Please give your pets some extra love from me and Michelle this week. I will talk to you next week.